I think it is. It is. It is. It's about that time of day again here, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you had a great, restful, and refreshing weekend. But it's time to get back to work, guys and gals. It's a, after all, it is that time of day again here. Monday evening, January 13th, 2020. My name is Joseph. And as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me because I help traders find high-quality trade setups using a very simple three-step strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job's a little bit different tonight. Tonight, my job is to help you find the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow, combine those levels with the best entry setups for tomorrow, and most importantly, my job tonight is to help you guys and gals avoid some of those common traps waiting on tomorrow. That's Tuesday's trading session. And we get a lot to cover in tonight's video. We got a ton of news this week. Got some earnings coming out, got maybe a trade deal, later on this week got a holiday weekend coming up right around the corner we'll talk about how that applies to these markets we'll talk about the charts obviously I got everything loaded up in the background for us tonight got some oil some S&P some Nasdaq and maybe a little bit of gold right we'll definitely uh, take a look at the gold market tonight here as well but I'm gonna jump in here first though and take a look at the calendar for tomorrow because I want to make sure you guys know what's moving these markets the best time to be watching the best time to be trading and the best time to sit on hands for tomorrow. Before we jump in though, don't forget if you have any questions about anything we talk about tonight on the video, drop those questions in the comment section below. And if you're here for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss another great video. Let's not waste any time though. Let's dive into that economic news calendar here, courtesy of Econo Day. And let's see what's happening here for the rest of the week. What are the most important things happening here this week? Week. Well, it's that time of the year again, earnings season before the markets open. And of course, after the markets close, we got some news coming out or well, earnings, corporate earnings. So NASDAQ, S&P, right? These are going to be the big markets affected both early in the session before the markets open and after the markets close. So if you're in the U.S. like I am, you're probably not going to see this effect too badly here. But if you're in Asia, if you're in Europe, be aware, be aware overnight just before the markets open, after the markets close, most of the earnings will happen after the closing bell, right? So be aware if you're in Asia, if you're in London, be aware. We get some earnings reports coming out here and you can check that on pretty much any earnings calendar. We'll have a, a breakdown of all of that if you want to know which markets or which symbols or which equities are going to be with earnings. I'm not going to worry too much about earnings though because we're going to focus on the meat and potatoes tomorrow during the U.S. morning session. And of course, we trade together every morning in our trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. So make come out and join us tomorrow. The most important news, though, this week, the CPI number tomorrow, that'll be the big news of the session tomorrow. Wednesday, of course, we got the big PPI number at 8.30, got the inventory report uh, at 10.30 on Wednesday. Retail sales on Thursday, big, big news on Thursday, and then, boy, a just a slew of news on Friday. Housing starts, big, right, big news. Industrial production, consumer sentiment, big news. Jolts report on Friday, big news. So as you can see, they've really kind of backloaded or right put most of the news here later on this week. But of course, going back to the most important thing for tomorrow, CPI number tomorrow at 8.30. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, I'm sure most of us have probably heard the rumors. I just saw a confirmation here on the, on the news wires this afternoon. The Chinese negotiators have touched down in Washington, D.C., right? They're checking their bags at the hotel. And supposedly, sometime between tomorrow and the deal signing on Wednesday, we're going to hear or we should see the English version of the published phase one trade deal. Now, will that happen tomorrow? Will they put it out before they sign the deal on Wednesday? Will it be after they sign the deal on Wednesday? Nobody really knows yet, but rumor has it that there is an English version of the trade, the phase one trade deal, right, circulating out there somewhere. And we're only, I would imagine, somebody's going to put that on the interwebs. And hopefully I get a chance to see it first and share it with you guys. But once I know more about that, I'll obviously relay that to all of my clients. Why is that important? Well, 
on 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 Wednesday morning, supposedly, supposedly, again, most of this is kind of unconfirmed, but supposedly, right, the U.S. and the Chinese will be signing that phase one trade deal on Wednesday. Will we get that published report? This is a big known unknown right now. And of course, you can see the markets right now. I'm not sure if you're watching charts right now, but markets finishing uh, equities all the way at all time highs, gold all the way at those lows. So a big melt up or a big meltdown right now. It looks like markets are pretty pretty uh, optimistic of this trade deal getting inked here on Wednesday. At this point, we are all kind of salivating over the idea of getting our hands on those on those uh that, that 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 transcript, right? And of course, the markets, once we get that, we'll know more, right? When will we get that tomorrow? I, I couldn't tell you. I wish I, I wish I knew, but that is definitely a known unknown here as we go into tomorrow and of course, as we go into Wednesday's trading session. We also have a holiday weekend coming up. It's uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend coming up this weekend. So next Monday is a holiday. And I'll tell you what that means for a lot of traders. That means a a lot of people are going to put a premium on the next couple days. So I'm, I'm anticipating a very good week in our trade room. I'm anticipating a very productive week in the markets. Hopefully this uh, this transcript of, 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 the, of the trade deals and things doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't shake things too much up here, but I can't wait to see what happens the next couple days here as we go into the finalizing of the trade deal. We got some, uh, right, some big news coming, some earnings before and after. It's going to be a busy, busy busy week. And of course, I'm pretty stoked to be here with you guys every step of the way. Big news tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. So as always, make sure you get with us. Join us tomorrow morning and every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in the trade room of a front row seat for that tomorrow morning on Tuesday morning. Now that you know what's moving these markets, you know we got that known unknown the next couple days with this trade deal. Let's take a look now at the charts and let's see if we can put together a good plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow's trading session. I'm going to jump first here to oil. We get some oil, some S&P, some NASDAQ, and of course, we'll wrap up tonight on that yellow metal, the gold futures. What do we know about oil right now? First of all, we know oil is bearish. Anytime we see a bear market, we always know the best plan of attack is going to be selling up at levels of resistance. What else do we know right now on this chart? We also know that bear market, right? It's bouncing around here, going sideways. That looks like a range to me. It may also end up being an expanding triangle. Wink, wink. You know how much I love those expanding triangles. I'll talk about that more as we go. What does a range tell me though? What does a range tell me? Range bound market with a bear bias. What does it tell me? It tells me sell above the top of that range. Can I buy underneath it? I can buy underneath it, but I've got to buy with a very specific reversal pattern, right? So range says buy low, sell high, avoid the middle. We know we're bearish. And wouldn't it be nice to sell above that range and sell off the high of this channel? Look at how great this channel looks. Boy, they really did a good job at making this channel fit like a glove. And you can see that channel would really be just a fantastic, right? Look at that trend line overhead. I hope we get a shot to take a swing at that off the highs tomorrow. That will be a great spot overhead there. And then obviously, if price goes lower here, got that big strong move down anytime we see a strong move in one direction we always know this potential for a measured move or a, a second leg right measured move of course being down there at 5721 so if these bears if they can keep clawing their way lower like they're doing right now they're doing a great job with it right now uh, 5721 is definitely looking to be um, a good target here for us so we've got our layout pretty well right we got our lay of the land here pretty good we know what we're doing we're bear Bearish. We're range bound. Um, I want to buy low. I want to sell high and avoid the middle of this range. You'll notice again, we got the channel up here. I want to sell high. I got that trading range on here and you'll notice, right? Little reversal line there. But most importantly, that lines up with our sell zone overhead, our buy zone right underneath. Okay. Let's play the sell side first. 
Okay, I want to make sure you guys know all the different setups I'm watching for tomorrow. And if you want to trade them with me, we'll do it together at 8 o'clock Eastern time like we do every morning in our trade room. First of all, right, first of all, let's talk about sell side here first. Now, we're coming off the low of that range. So we're anticipating now, like ranges do, they rotate back and forth. So we should see some profit taking here. We should see the market rotate back in. And as we rotate, rotate higher here again we've got that trend line coming down that trend line overhead right we've got that resistance area overhead here's the problem though if a market right if this market runs higher here right now that's going to be quite a bit of momentum that I, I'm just not I'm just not too sure about just selling into that level of resistance. So instead, if we can get that pullback going higher here, instead what I'll do is is I'll use one of my favorite setups. Anytime I'm concerned about momentum, and that is when I've got this thing running higher here, I would anticipate buyers are probably going to try to buy the pullback to that moving average. You can see an example back here, right? They go up and see how they try to buy that little pullback right there. They try to buy that pullback. See what happens when they fail, the market collapses right back down in. I call that a failure pattern. So if I get this market to run up to the highs, again, I just don't like to step in front of those freight trains. So for me, what I like to do is I like to wait for those buyers to try to buy the pullback. And then I try to, I, just, I wait and look, okay, if I was a buyer, where would my stop be? And once I see those buyers try to buy that pullback, I just want to sell into those stop losses. I call this a failure pattern, right? A failure pattern. Now, there's always potential that when the market swings like this, it kind of keeps going. And so I want to kind of give you guys a little bit more uh, more uh, information here. So if, if, if we get up into that first battle zone, notice here I got one battle zone there, one battle zone right there, right? That is, by the way, just a byproduct of that trading range. You can probably see there, right? They're symmetrical in size there. So if I go into that first battle zone now, right, I'm going to use what I call a failure pattern, right? Again, off the moving average and sell back down. But if I get into that top, that top one up top there, right, the secondary battle zone, now at this point now, that momentum is going to be pretty strong, right? And so if we get up into that secondary battle zone, now I'm looking for the same thing, but now what I want to do is, is let the buyers actually try twice off the EMA. One try, two try, and then I'll sell it back down. Now, you might be wondering, how do you know which is which, right? How do you know whether you want to take your regular failure pattern off that high or whether you want to go with what I call a nested failure, which would be a one and a two and then back down again? And remember, the answer is it's all about momentum. And one of the things I like to do is I like to break down one battle zone and then two battle zones, right? In the first one, it's a straight failure pattern, right? In the second one, I'm looking for what I call a nested failure to sell off that high. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is tomorrow is if we get back into that range, right? I don't want to do anything inside that range, right? They're sitting right around that 58 and a quarter area. Stay away from that range. Okay. Now, what if we go lower here? If we do make a run lower, I know where they're trying to go, right? Here are two sell patterns I'm looking for as we go lower. One of them would be a one, two, three breakdown. Okay. What happens is we pull back to the EMA. We see a strong jump off of it. If I can get that now, I'm going to mark up these lows to find a hidden channel and I'll find that high, right? And I'll find the high up there and I'll use that high to sell off that high. Now, if I can do it in combination of the low of that channel, that would be great. It's not necessary, but it sure as heck wouldn't hurt, right? But I want to sell the high of that channel. I call that a one, two, three breakout. Remember, it's a range right now, right? So I got to get a breakdown to get that short. One more pattern to think to think for is is called the two try breakout. Strong move down. Now remember at this point, what's the problem? The measured move is the next objective, right? Trending environment, measured move is where we're trying to go. I don't want to sell too close to that measured move. I want to see profit taking once, sellers try twice, and ideally double tops the minimum, ideal trap high here. I call that a two try breakout pattern, all right? So now we know the two patterns as we go lower, the two patterns as we go higher. Now, how about the buy side here? 
All right, how do I buy underneath the range? I mentioned earlier, range tells me buy low, sell high. How do I buy underneath a range? Well, remember, it's not a bull market right now, is it? Okay, it's a bear market. So as I go lower under the range, what's the best way to buy a bear market? You need a reversal pattern. What's my favorite reversal pattern? You probably know this if you tune in every evening. If it's your first time here, though, I call it a crown reversal. A one try for the bears, a two try for the bears, a trap low, right? This is the trick to a reversal. What you want to do is you want to give those, you know, kind of pardon the imagery on this one, but you want to give the bears two opportunities to wrap that noose right around their neck. Remember, it's, it's a bear market. So the bears are not going to give up without much of a fight here. They're going to keep on, you know, clawing their way lower like they have the past couple days. Let them try once, let them try twice. And the safest place you can get long is where sellers won't be. They're not going to want to sell underneath that prior swing. Not the, not, not the sellers that we care about. I'm sure there'll be some rookies selling down there, but they're not the ones we've got to worry about. The pros, right, they're going to sell high. They're going to sell high. They're not going to sell under that low. And that's why if I'm going after a reversal, I've got to be conservative with it. I've got to respect momentum. Doesn't, doesn't mean I can't buy it. It just means I've got to stay patient. I call that a crown reversal pattern. That's my go-to pattern to buy off of that low. But what if we just rip higher here, right? Now, two patterns I'm watching for as we go. One of them is a one, two, three reversal. One, strong move up. Now here, I'm trying to sell that high, right? But instead, the buyers hold it and they jump. If they can hold off of that high, now the buyers have it. Sorry, if they can hold the pullback to the moving average, that's the key. Remember, if they fail, we're going right back down in again. But if they can hold that pullback now, now we know those bulls have it. Here's the trick. I'm going to mark up that high. I'm going to mark up a new trend line higher. Go down to that major low. Find that low. There's your sweet spot right there, right? That's your sweet spot right there. That is almost a guaranteed winner and I say almost because you know nothing's ever guaranteed I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to say guaranteed on the YouTubes anymore right but I'm kidding with you obviously but the reality is is that right nothing's guaranteed but that's a very reliable setup as we go now one thing else you want to keep your eyes on it's been a little bit bearish lately hasn't it yeah this is a little bit bearish lately right so what would happen if the bears got spooked you know, let's say that OPEC comes out overnight and they say, you know what, we decided to slash production, right? Or maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, right? Any, anything could happen, right? What if this thing just rips higher here, right? Big short covering rally. Remember, anytime you see, look at these bears, right? Is it just, I mean, look at, look at that bear market, right? That's a lot of bears that are probably still kind of holding on for dear life, right? But if they get spooked, what's going to happen? The market will run as it goes. Now, very, very important. Do not try to predict this reversal. The only way to trade the reversal, the, well, the conservative way is to go up, pull back and go. That will confirm that reversal. But if it rips, right? Really rips higher here. Now I can get aggressive. If I see a nice strong run up like this profit taking comes first the buyers who are in will take some profit sellers now here's the secret sauce the sellers will now slip their orders in right above that high and what happens is they'll come and they'll try to sell that trap when i see that now i know bears once twice now a nice strong signal candle and you're literally buying right into all of those sellers who are now committed. Again, strong signal. I call that, a two, again, a two-try breakout pattern in this example. Now, where would they be trying to go? Where would buyers be trying to go? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that 60 bucks a barrel is probably going to be an easy milestone for us, right? We had a bunch of volume around that 59.80, you know, late last week. So I would say that 59.80 area is a pretty easy target as these buyers take control for tomorrow. So guys, got a great chart prepped up here on the crude oil. Looking for some, looking for some failure patterns above the highs, some crown reversal 
pulls off of that lows. And you know what? I've talked about a lot of different patterns here tonight. If you're here for the first time right now, a lot of this terminology might be brand new to you. So if you want a deeper dive, along with hundreds of examples of how we use these patterns on our favorite markets, make sure you grab our free trading course. I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner for you. If you're on YouTube right now, all the links I talk about tonight will be in the description of the YouTube video. But you should see a little pop-up there in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link get registered on our website as a new member of our free trading classes as part of that free course you'll see you'll, you'll, you'll learn the entire trading strategy my four favorite setups you'll see hundreds of examples of how we apply those setups to our favorite markets I think you're gonna love that course so pause the video grab that free course I'll be waiting for you when you come back in the meantime though let's keep this party rolling here tonight shall we how about some S&P coming up next well Oil was a bear market. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we're bull, just a little bit bullish here on the S&P. It looks like it looks like the S&P and the Nasdaq tonight have gone full on FOMO on us right now. It looks to me like the S&P and the Nasdaq they've already priced in this trade deal. So it looks like right the markets clearly know something that i might know that, that, that i don't know right now it looks like they are very optimistic of this trade deal being signed here so strong bull run up most important clues we see right now strong bull run on the chart right now what does a strong bull run tell us right it tells us that obviously bulls have control i want to buy at support but what do we always say on this newsletter anytime we see a strong move in one direction there's a very high probability we see a deep pullback at some point tomorrow and a retest of those highs, right? Now, do we keep going through the highs? That I can't tell you, right? But anytime we see, look back here, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we usually see a deep pullback and a retest of those highs. In this case, they kept on going higher. Tomorrow, right, they may not, they may not keep going higher, but anytime I see a new, right, anytime I see a strong move like this, I'm anticipating a relatively deep pullback and again, a retest of those highs. Maybe it keeps going through those highs. That we don't know, that's a known unknown. Now, what else do we know? Fresh all-time highs, right, fresh, all-time highs here right now what does that mean to me what it means to me is the last time we saw some freshies right some all-time highs we kind of got chopped up in a range right remember that from last week that is very likely here for tomorrow right so remember what happened last time after we saw a trading range we saw a deep pullback and a retest of the range right so deep pullback and back in so we're expecting to see now Keep in mind, you know, for all I know, the market will keep going higher here, and we'll get a plan for that here. We'll talk about that in a moment. But typically, though, when a market kind of melts up like this all day long, like it kind of did here today, right, oftentimes the following day is going to be a trading range, okay? So we're definitely anticipating a trading range. What does a range tell me to do? Range says to buy underneath that range, just like, right, just like we saw the last time we had that big run up, right? There was your range. What do we do? We buy underneath the range. Now, that definitely takes some patience, right? So we'll definitely be on our best behavior tomorrow if it just goes sideways on it. What else do we know? We know the market's a trend right now. What does a trending market tell me to do? It tells me to go with the trend. Obviously, we're bullish. What else does it tell me right now? It tells me to use two main components, measured moves, and channels. First of all, you can see one, two, three legs up. We appear to be right on the measured move right now. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up going sideways here tomorrow by the dip below that trading range. What else does a trending market tell us? It tells me to use, got measured moves, go with the trend. The third thing is a channel, right? And just like oil, we really have a nice, just a good fit for that trading channel right now. I wanna buy the low of that trading channel, right? Of that trend channel. So boy, there's a lot of great clues, right? The market is bullish right now. Bull market says, I wanna buy at support. Notice these reversal lines back here. I got the 81 level, the 78 level. That really, to me, looks to be a great, juicy, deep pullback, right, that buyers can really get excited about here. Remember, when you 
you see a market move like this, and it really melts up, as we call it, right, the FOMO run here, a lot of buyers are going to be just waiting for anything that pulls back to those prior swings, right? Prior swing high, prior swing high, right? Those swings right there are going to be highly desirable for anybody really who wants to participate in this bull market. Now, if we go higher here, where do we think this market might be trying to go? I'm going to guess 3,300. Yeah, 3,300. I think 3,500 seems dare I say realistic in this cuckoo market right now, right? I know this market's red hot right now. And of course, it feels like they're pricing right in this trade deal on Wednesday, but it does seem like 3,300 could be a reasonable target in the short term. I'm not much of a prediction to a person, but I would imagine 3,300 will be a decent target for those buyers. Okay, let's break this down now. We know we're bullish, strong move up tells me we're going to probably get a deep pullback at some point, right? And a retest of that high. Uh, fresh all-time highs, right? The freshies, they tell me, of course, expect a trading range. Range says buy underneath that low, right? Where could I get long off of? Plenty of support levels that are waiting here as well. Okay, let's put the plan together now. Now we know what we're looking for here. I think the biggest challenge we have right now is just not knowing whether or not we're going to see a range or not. Let's play the buy side here first. There are really three... There are three scenarios I, I'm getting ready for for tomorrow. One of them is called a two-legged pullback, right? A deep pullback does usually give us the potential, right, to get, again, two-legged pullback, one, two, and then, of course, up and over and in. One of my favorite, favorite setups to buy very, very low on the chart is called a two-legged pullback pattern, or as I affectionately call it here, a 2LP, right? Two LPs are one of my favorites whenever I'm anticipating a deep pullback in the market. I'm also watching for, as you can imagine, right, that move down to that low. If you watch the newsletter, you know I love these counter trend failures, right? Imagine now a strong move down. The sellers are saying, see, we're going to reverse. The bears come in. They try to sell off of that, off the EMA. Is it a bear market though? It's not a bear market, is it? What do you think the odds are that sellers go back to retest that low? At this point, it's probably only about 30%, right? So which side would you like to be on, the 30 or the 70 side? I'm going to I'm going to assume you choose the 70 side right now, right? That's where the odds are, and I want to go with that side as well. So if I see a deep pullback to lower that channel, I'm anticipating that sellers will think this market has reversed. Once I see him put in that pullback, now I know exactly where their stops are. I can look now to buy directly into those stops. And if I get lucky, I can use that combination setup, that failure into pullback combination. A great, great opportunity to get a double dip on the way back up where? To retest those highs. Remember, strong bull move, Deep pullback, retest of the high. I'm buying low, taking my profit back up at the high of that range. But what if something happens overnight? What if the market really gets spooked? What if we really shoot lower here on some strength? You know, this could easily happen. You know, something happens right overnight. You know, they're, they're trying to, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to sign this, you know, phase one trade deal, or maybe some news that comes out, some earnings come out overnight and spook the market running lower. What would happen now? We'd have to wait for, what was that pattern called again? It's called a nested failure, right? It's one try for the bears, two try for the bears, and then back up where? To retest the high again. Now, keep in mind, guys, once we get those bears trying once, trying twice, what we're doing is we're really trying to buy right where it hurts them the most, right into those stop losses, right? Because if you're a seller and you get stopped out, what happens? You're a buyer now. The only way to get out of a short position is to buy your way out, right? So we know we got stops sitting up there. That's an easy long going higher. But I'll tell you, when you get these deep pullbacks like this that give you these great risk-reward ratios, oftentimes the move going higher is really strong. So sometimes we don't get that pullback, right? I always look for the pullback, right? Failure pullback combination. But I'll tell you right now, sometimes we don't get that pullback. Sometimes it runs. Now, what's the best pattern to get in while it's running? Two try trap. 
one try, two try, trap, and go, right? These are what to expect if we really get that spook for tomorrow, right? If it really rockets lower. Now, at this point now, all right, I I know what you're thinking right now. Well, wait a second, Joe. If it really pulls back far, at what point does this thing become a reversal then? Right. If you're trying, if you're still trying to buy this deep pullback, so when does this become a bear market? Then it becomes a bear market once they can hold that pullback and run. What do we call that? A one, two, three reversal. Right. Once we see those bears commit off the moving average, I'm not trying to sell that pullback. Right. I'm not trying to sell that test. Right. Look back here. Same thing happened back here. Nice shot lower. Bears come in, they try to sell it, thinking we're reversing, what happens? It didn't end well, right? It did not end well for the Bears, right? The Bears, the Bears wound up getting getting smoked and running back up where? To retest those highs. However, if the Bears can hold this and make a run for it, good for them. I'm going to mark up that low. I'm going to mark up that low. Find that high. Find that hidden channel. Where's my sweet spot? It's right there, right? There's my sweet spot selling back down. Where's my targets? Back down to retest those lows. Or eh, probably not going to happen, but if it does, if if we get a free fall tomorrow, right? We'll free fall tomorrow. If it really runs and kind of really free falls tomorrow, one try, two try for the bulls, right? Just get profit taking, buyers trying, right? Trap, and we'll finish off from there. I don't anticipate that to be tomorrow just because of the nature of this market right now, but I will keep an eye out for that two try right trap pattern now what if we go sideways here i'm trying to make sure i cover all the bases here for uh for me and for you and and, right and most importantly for my clients so we're all ready for tomorrow what if we do go sideways up here again if history repeats itself tomorrow we should start seeing this thing go sideways if it does go sideways i'll take the size of that range i'll use that range to identify what we call the range expansions. We talked about these on oil, and then I'm waiting for that pull back. I'm waiting for those poor sellers to come in and try to sell that breakout pullback, and I'll look for that breakout pullback to fail. See, when I was a rookie, I'll I'll tell you, I tried so hard when I was a rookie trying to filter these breakout pullbacks. The problem is when you're trying to take a pullback, or sorry, when you're trying to take a breakout pattern going against the trend, you're asking for trouble, right? The odds are stacked against you and buyers, like I said, they know that big bull momentum. They're not gonna they're not gonna try to reverse it. They're gonna wait for those sellers to wrap that noose right around their neck and they're gonna buy right into those stop losses. You know, because the easiest money you'll ever make is when counter trend traders get fooled into thinking this thing's reversed and you're buying right into their exit, right? Where those bears become sellers, right? Sorry, once those sellers become buyers, I'm buying too and the market oftentimes just slams right back up to retest the high. One more thing though, what if we go higher here? If we do go higher, what's the one thing we haven't seen yet? If we do keep going higher here, what's the one thing we haven't seen yet? A pullback, absolutely. So if we do keep going higher, right, aggressive buyers are looking for traps underneath these lows. This will be much more important as we get closer to that big round number, right? The more conservative entry, of course, would be that deep pullback, right? Moving average comes back down. And you know what I'm going to say. Wait for those sellers to call the top off the EMA, buy into those stops. And of course, we're buying the pullback, right? Off the EMA as well, right? So failure into pullback combinations. The moral of the story is, right? Unless unless we see that blast higher, right? If it, if it blasts higher, I'm looking for a two-try trap, right? Trap patterns are my favorite patterns to avoid buying into that big round number. We don't want to buy high, want to buy low. So there's two things to consider there as we go. If we just smoke these fools going higher, right? If it rips higher here right now, trap low, right? But if it gives a nice deep pullback, failure into pullback combination. I'm anticipating a range for tomorrow, but you know me, right? I don't care what I get. All I care is I'm going with momentum, 
I'm capitalizing on counter trend traders getting trapped on the wrong side of the mark because that's going to be the easiest money, right, that we'll make on Tuesday. And again, right, known unknowns right now. Will we get the transcript sometime overnight? Will we hear more about, the, about this trade deal before Wednesday's signing? Will there be any, uh, you know, shenanigans as we go up? I think everyone's kind of walking on eggshells right now thinking there's no way they're going to come all the way from Beijing and just, oop, sign right here. Okay, okay. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I just don't see it happening, but hopefully it does. Hopefully everything goes smoothly here. I would anticipate, though, there might be some shenanigans as we get closer to Wednesday, and hopefully we do. Hopefully the market's spooked. Hopefully it tumbles and we can grab that nested, right? Wouldn't that be great? If it is ripped lower, we wait for those bears. I think that, right, that, that the world's coming to an end and buy right into those stop losses, right? I know what I'm hoping for, right, for tomorrow. So we'll see what we get. Right, but S&P looking pretty good here, though, for a pullback. How about the NASDAQ here? NASDAQ is very similar. I think the big thing about the NASDAQ right now is you can see the NASDAQ, again, melting up. You can definitely tell NASDAQ is suffering from a bit of FOMO right now. Everybody everybody appears to think that this trade deal is already signed, right? We might see some surprises out of that, but we'll see. That big round number at, excuse me, at 9,100 definitely appears to be where they're trying to go here right now on the NQ. What do we know about the NASDAQ here? We know we have a strong bull run. What does a strong bull run tell me? It tells me bulls have control. It tells me we have a high probability of a deep pullback and what? And a retest of that high. Okay, we also know we in a bull market, I wanna buy at support. I got a bunch of interesting little resistance areas there, right at that 65. I've got this level of 52 half. 52 half is probably the best level on the chart tomorrow. 90, 52 half area, that looks to be probably the best level for tomorrow, right? That big strong run up. I would love to get that spot to buy off that, that 52 half tomorrow, 52 half, right, on the NASDAQ. So that will be a great area to be a buyer. I'll bet, I'll bet if you were to look at the order book, right, on this area, I bet everybody's got their orders stacked in around that 52 half area. So that's definitely a desirable area there. So reversal line is a great area of support. And of course, I've also got my channel here too, right? That channel being drawn up really off the low here right now. But let's try to see if we can... Market's closing up right now. Let's draw that channel again because it kept on rising and I couldn't get the, the hidden channel in there. If I draw the hidden channel off those highs, where's the bet? Oh, boy, like a glove. Wow, beautiful channel there off of that low. Bounce, 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 right? Line the highs up there. So now we've got the low of that channel, that support. Look at where that lines up with. Right around 65 and a quarter. Excellent spot excellent spot right so we got a good idea of where i want to be a buyer here as we go now again big strong run up expecting a relatively deep pullback right i got my levels marked up here what would be some patterns here to expect for tomorrow on that pullback one of them would be a two-legged pullback okay these are pretty common whenever we're expecting a deep pullback right draw the trend line up we want to get up and over and buy that trend line. What do we call it again? A two LP, a two legged pullback, right? What else do we have here right now? How about a relatively shallow pullback down below the channel? Okay, failure off the EMA, buying into stops, and then of course buying that pullback to the moving average there, right? That's a combination setup. It's a failure into a bullish pullback as we're going higher there, right? Again, where? Back to retest those highs. What if it really collapses though, right? What if something spooks us and we really collapse down here? We're not bearish yet, but we're getting, you know, we're, we're getting a whooping on the way down though, right? We're bearish, we're, we're not bearish yet. We're way too bullish for a strong pullback to shake our confidence. But now we know the bears will probably try twice now before we can buy into those stops. And remember, a lot of times those really deep, sharp, sharp pullbacks, sellers, they get so confident with this, when they fail, the market rips higher. And as it's ripping higher here, look for that trap, that two try trap pattern right so it's a nested failure into a two try trap and the reason why you want that trap is because you don't want to buy where you want to buy back into the high right we're not trying to buy high we're trying to buy low 
So if you miss out on that failure pattern, your next best option is that to try trap below that low. And you know, again, guys, I want to remind you, if you're here for the first time, um, I'm just simply marking up these charts with the patterns I'm watching for tomorrow. We're going to go out and trade this stuff together tomorrow at the opening bell in our trade room. If you haven't done so yet, grab the free trading course I mentioned earlier. It's linked up in the upper right hand corner. I'll put all the links in the description right of that of that YouTube video. So if you have any right questions, grab the links in the description of the YouTube video. Make sure you take that free trading course because it'll teach you all about our favorite patterns and you'll see hundreds of examples of how we apply those patterns to our favorite markets. So we're trying to buy that pullback. Again, I would also imagine too there's a good chance for tomorrow on the NASDAQ we start going sideways. Right? Again, anytime I see this much movement in one session, I am anticipating a range for tomorrow. Once we know more of that range, then I'll look for, right? Then I'll look for that range expansion level. And same thing, we'll look for that pull back. We'll look for those sellers to get into trouble off of the moving average once those bears, right? Once those bears, once those bears commit to sell on that pullback, now we know exactly where their pain begins, right? Isn't that the truth? Right? Where do the bears start waving the white flag? It's right above that high. And that's exactly why we're trying to be a buyer going back up into that range. Bull market into a trading range. We're buying with a failure setup underneath that range low. Now, what if we keep going higher here? If we keep going higher again, we get that round number. So if we keep going higher, I'm anticipating a range up here. We already know how that will go. I don't want to buy high. I still want to wait for that pullback. I want to wait for those bears to get caught so I can buy into those stop losses. Now, speaking of bears in the market, what would a reversal look like? A reversal would be a strong move down. First of all, that sets the table. Moving average will come over and this is where they've got to hold it, right? The bears will try to sell it if they can hold it, right? And take it lower on strength. It's now a bear market. We'll mark up that low. We'll draw a trend line off of those lows and then a trend line off of that high. This creates that hidden channel and I'm going to sell off the top of that hidden channel. These patterns are almost bulletproof. Just got to wait for them, right? I would much rather skip trying to predict the reversal because most reversals fail and just wait for the more reliable pattern. You know, there's no, there's no trophy for the number of trades you take, right? The only person that makes the money when you over trade is your broker. So stay patient and wait for the trades that give you a winning chance of success, right? Wait for the reversal and then sell off of that high. And again, if it really collapses, what I don't, I don't expect, but again, we get earnings right overnight here. So we may see some earnings that come out. Maybe it, maybe it spooks the market and we take off the downside, one try for the bulls, two try for the bulls. Once the profit taking hits and the buyers come in and try again, now all we need is that strong signal candle. We're selling right into those stop losses and you need those stops to be there because technically you are selling very low at that time and those stops will fuel your first target and give you a chance to remove the risk quickly and then hold on to a potential move back down to that low for tomorrow. So that's the idea as we go lower. NASDAQ is looking good. What do you think so far? Right? How am I doing so far? If you're enjoying it so far, if you guys are learning something, if you guys enjoy this newsletter, give me a thumbs up here, will you? Right? How about some questions? Any questions so far, right? What's the best pattern for this? What's the worst pattern for that? Why don't you use this? Drop me those questions in the comment section below. I want to make sure you guys really grasp this. But I'll tell you right now, I'm 45 minutes into this video right now. This time flies right by when you're having fun. If you're still here right now with me, though, you are, you are the people I love working with that are dedicated to your own success. Hit that thumbs up button for me. Show me that you're still with me here right? as part of the finishing group here on this news. Let's wrap this up though with our gold. Gold is, well, gold's back to where it started from last week. We talked about this last week. Big move down. They got the retest of that low. All right, let's break this down. What do we know about gold right now? Bear momentum, right? Bear momentum. Look at that shot lower. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we usually see? We usually see a deep pullback. 
We usually see those foolish counter trend buyers getting smoked and a retest of what? Of that low. I'm not making this stuff up. You can see it happening right in front of you right now. What is that? A seller failure pattern. Okay, so bear momentum says sell at resistance levels overhead. What else do we have here? It's a range, right? It's a range. Now I got to go back and look a few, right? And look, look a few days over there, right? Because remember we went down and we kind of spent a lot of time late last week inside that range. Very important clue on this chart because what does a range tell us to do? It tells the buy low. It tells us to sell high. And what? And avoid the middle, right? How do we sell high in a bear market? We sell high with a buyer failure. You can see, right? You can see the pattern right here, right? There's your buyer failure, right? So buyer failure selling off the high. And again, like I mentioned earlier, right? It'll be a failure pattern if it goes into that first sell zone, right? Or if we really rip higher into that resistance overhead, I, I'm still okay to sell this, but I got to wait for what? Wait for the buyers to try once, try twice, right? And again, I want that coming down around that moving average. Buyers try once, buyers try twice. Let them wrap the proverbial noose around their neck, right? And then sell it right into it. What happens a lot is when a market really cooks higher, the buyers aren't going to give up right they're just they're, they're they're just not right look back here strong move up buyers try once buyers try twice to retest the high right if you would have tried to have sell underneath that that, that low you've been stopped out it's the same idea right so we go up the buyers try once buyers try twice and then sell it because now you know they're all piled on right we go up into the secondary battle zone into that level of resistance let those buyers try once let them try twice and we'll sell into those stops from there again what do we call that a nested failure pattern again if you haven't done so yet make sure you register for that free course so you can see how these patterns look how do you buy off of this low how do you buy off a low? What's the most reliable? Now, remember, there are lots of reversal patterns. Whatever you do, don't use, don't rely on divergence. Okay, I had, had somebody ask me this this afternoon in an email, you know, what do you think about divergence? I think divergence is icing on the cake of an already good setup, but do not rely on divergence to be your backbone. Let's put it this way. Divergence should not be the first, second, or third reason why you're, tra you're trading, right? What I want to do is I want to find a great looking setup and then, oh, look at that, a bonus. There's also divergence, right? I would never say, well, you've got divergence here and since we're at support, I'll buy it. Not enough, not reliable, right? So momentum divergence, MACD divergence. I'm not going to say you can't use it, but it's a lot like Fibonacci. Some of them work, some of them don't. We don't want to rely on stuff. There's too much at risk, right? This is our trading career we're talking about. Get serious about finding reliable setups. What's a favorite setup for reversals? A crown reversal. One try for the bears, two try for the bears. Worst case scenario, is it a bottom here? Best case scenario is that trap. So as we go lower, and again, this is the same identical pattern we talked about on the crude oil, right? We know we have a range. We know the market is bearish overall. There's also a fundamental drag of this thing going lower because of all the euphoria about the trade deal and the strong economic data, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be important right now. We don't try to pick bottoms here on the yellow metal. I never want to pick a bottom on any market for that matter, right? Let those bears try once, let them try twice, and we'll grab that crown reversal. This is a very good pattern, but I'm going to warn you, it always seems to take longer than I think it will take to set up, right? A reversal pattern's probably not going to probably not going to set up properly in less than 15 minutes. I'm going to warn you right now, right? So what I don't want to do is is look for one of those little tiny little crown reversals, right? You know what I mean? On like a 144 tick chart or some, you know, some some ridiculousness like that, right? It's got to go down, come back, try once, try again, right? And again, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour it often takes for this battleship to turn around. So don't force it, wait for the right setup. And if you're wondering, you know, what does timing look like on this? Don't forget, we're going to do it together every morning in our training. 
trade room. Now, how do we break out of this range? And how do we trade this stuff? Okay, this is, this is going to be the tough part here. Anytime I see a strong move in one direction, I'm going to probably get in their leg. Now, look at that measured move. It lines up right with that prior low at 41. Okay, right at that prior low. So what I can do here is, if I see a strong shot lower, what's the best pattern to avoid selling low? A trap. What kind of a trap? Well, to try trap is what I go for. I'm looking for a strong move down, first of all. We've got to get into this before we get to that 41. That's one of the most important things. Buyers try once, sorry, profit taking. Then the buyers come in. The buyers are loaded up. We sell into those stops. That's probably going to be the only pattern we're going to get our hands on as the market runs lower. What's, what's also very likely is we slam lower or we just collapse lower here and we start going sideways down here. Okay, this will have to take some time to develop. If we get the range down here, I'm looking for a one, two, and sell above that high. A failure pattern, right? Wait for that pullback. Wait for those poor counter trend buyers. Try calling that reversal, right? We've seen this pattern many, many times already here, right, on the gold. And we're ultimately looking for, right, a sell up above that high. Very simple, a very simple failure pattern, right? A breakout pullback failure going with the momentum of the market. How about a reversal going higher, right? Maybe something happens, the market's spooked. Watch this trend line, okay? Watch that trend line. That trend line's probably gonna be your best friend, right? Strong move up, one, two, three, breakout, right? Mark up that high, mark up that low, Ideally, ideally, we're using that trend line as, right, this trend line right here, right? Using that trend line as a little sneaky level of support. Another pattern I'm watching for as we go. Strong move up, profit taking, right? Trap low, again, minimum is a double bottom. Trap low, right, off of that low as well, right? So again, I really want to try to get above that trend line to be a buyer here right now, right? A lot of this because of it's all inside that battle zone, right, underneath it. So get above that trend line, right? Bears try once, bears try twice. Trap low because what you want to do is you want to get those bears to wrap that rope around their neck so you can buy right into those stops. You're going to need those stops up there to fuel that move up to, Boy, where is the next level up there? Where are they gonna go from there? Okay, that previous range back there is at 15, we'll say 1575, 1577, right? There's a previous range all the way back up from the beginning of the year. So a pretty good idea here on it. I think the only thing we don't know yet is if it keeps going lower, right? If it does go lower here, I'll be looking for a spike in channel, looking to sell that failure going higher, but we'll know more about that tomorrow once we get together in our trade room. And speaking of trade room, speaking of trade room, tomorrow morning and every morning, we're going to get together like clockwork, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Now you, got, now you guys and gals know what I'm looking for for tomorrow. Come out and join me in the trade room and let's trade it together. That way you don't have to go through all the stress and anxiety like I went through almost 15 years ago. You won't lose a bunch of money. You'll know exactly where to be looking, where to avoid. I'll show you everything as you look over my shoulder and we do it together. Now, if you're on YouTube right now, I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video to get registered for tomorrow morning's morning trading session at 8 o'clock Eastern time. If you have any questions at all, again, all the links in the description of the YouTube video, please Please feel free to call that toll-free phone number, right, and ring me up here in the office. I've got a live support tool on the right-hand side of the website. And as always, if membership and joining our trade as a client is not quite right for you today, then make sure you grab our free trading course. It's included as along with our free trial. The free trial includes a free pass to our trade room, hundreds of examples of how we use this strategy on our favorite markets, and of course, the free course so you can follow along with me more in tune every evening on this video newsletter. Guys and gals, I've taken up too much of your valuable time. Hope you guys had a great day out there. Hope you learned a lot. Hope I see you tomorrow at the opening bell. And as always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. And be here next time, will ya? Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.